Good day, Earth Science students. Welcome to video lecture episode 24. Today we're going to start in section 2 of chapter 24, and in particular we're going to get started talking about the inner planets. Now we do have three objectives that I hope we can cover as we cover through this second section of chapter 24, and they are as follows. Objective 1, list the inner planets in their relative order from the sun. Objective 2, describe important characteristics of each inner planet. And objective 3, compare and contrast Venus and Earth. All right. Today, people know more about the solar system than ever before. Better telescopes have allowed astronomers to observe the planets from Earth and space. In fact, if you look on slide 35, you can see the four inner planets that we'll be covering in this section in the image that I've provided there. Now, in addition, space probes have explored much of the solar system. So I hope you're ready to take a tour of the solar system through the eyes of some space probes, because that's what we're going to have the opportunity to see with some of the images that will be on the slides but also some of the information that we've learned over time as well. So let's start off with Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. It is also the second smallest planet. Now the first American spacecraft mission to Mercury was in 1974 and 1975, and that was by Mariner 10. The spacecraft flew by the planet and sent pictures back to Earth. Mariner 10 photographed only 45% of Mercury's surface, so at this point scientists actually don't know what the other 55% looks like. But what they do know is that the surface of Mercury has many craters and looks much like Earth's moon. It also has cliffs as high as 3 kilometers on its surface. Now these cliffs may have formed at a time when Mercury, Mercury apparent, apparently shrank in diameter. Now a question I have for you, why would Mercury have shrunk? If you could, you can leave that in the comments below or write it in your notes as well. Just think about that for a moment, alright? Well, Mariner 10 did detect a weak magnetic field around Mercury. What this indicates is that, the planet ha that this planet has an iron core. Now some scientists have hypothesized that the crust of Mercury solidified while the iron core was still hot and molten. Now as the core cooled and solidified, it contracted. The cliffs might have resulted from breaks in the crust caused by this contraction. Let's talk about Mercury. Does it have an atmosphere? Because of Mercury's small size and low gravitational pull, most gases that could form an atmosphere escape into space. Mariner 10 found traces of gases that were first thought to be an atmosphere, so they thought they were at first. However, these gases are now known to be temporarily trapped hydrogen and helium from the solar wind. Mercury traps these gases and holds them for just a few weeks. Pretty interesting to think about. Earth-based observations have also found traces of sodium and potassium around Mercury. Scientists think that these atoms come from the rocks in the planet's crust. It's just what we think. We don't know for certain, but it's, it's something we at least hypothesize about. Therefore, Mercury really doesn't have a true atmosphere. Now, this lack of an atmosphere and the nearness of Mercury to the sun causes this planet to have great extremes in temperature. And we'll talk about those in just a moment. Actually, if you look on slide 48, let's go ahead and mention those now. Listen to this. Mercury's surface temperature can reach 425 degrees Celsius during the day, and it can drop to negative 170 degrees Celsius at night. Talk about extremes. Very hot during the day, very cold at night, very hard to live in. All right, so let's move to slide 49. Let's talk about the next inner planet, and that is Venus. Venus is the second planet from the sun, and if you look at slide 49, you can see a picture of it, what it looks like. Venus is sometimes called, is sometimes called Earth's twin because its size and mass are similar to Earth. Well, in 1962, Mariner 2 flew within 34,400 kilometers of Venus and sent back information about Venus's atmosphere and rotation. The former Soviet Union landed the first probe on the surface of Venus in 1970. All right. Venera 7, however, stopped working in less than an hour because of the high temperature and pressure. Additional Venera probes photographed and mapped the surface of Venus using cameras and radar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop our discussion here. We'll pick up tomorrow. I do hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Have a nice day. Take care. Goodbye.